Hi everyone and welcome back to Crochet Cricut. This is Christine uh, and in today's video I'm going to teach you guys how to make this crochet book tote with the moon accent. Uh, it's actually a clip-on accent and we have some star detailing here. The book sleeve, well the book tote with the handles is also lined. So it looks like that on the inside and it has um, some stabilizer inside of it, some plastic stabilizer, so it's nice and solid. It stays up all by itself, even when you don't have the book inside of it. So you could use this for your books, but you can also use it for anything else you wanna carry. So let me show you the materials and the plan, and then we'll get into each section of the tutorial. I will point out that this is a little bit more of an intermediate level project. If you are a beginner, I would not suggest doing this uh, project because it's um, a little bit more in depth, but what you could do instead uh, is the basic book sleeve, and then you can just skip ahead to the um, tutorial for the, the handles and the liner, and you can add those handles and that liner to this other book sleeve. And I'll put a link um, below for the tutorial for this one. So if you're a beginner, do this one first and uh, you can do it with a different category yarn. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this with a fingering weight yarn, but if you have worsted weight yarn, for this beginner one, you could use worsted weight instead of fingering weight. So for the materials for the actual um, body of the tote, the crochet part, you're gonna need, um, if you're doing the one that I'm doing with the same yarn that I'm doing it with, you're gonna need two balls of uh, fingering weight, category one, uh, so it's like a super fine or, you know, um, a fingering weight. And I use Hobby 8 slash 4 for this, the cotton that they have. So you'll need two balls of that. You need uh, an accent color for the moon. Uh, so you can use like a gray or a white for your moon, whatever uh, whatever you have that you like. You're going to need a hook. I am using a 2.5 um, millimeter hook. It's the smaller recommended hook size for this yarn. And plus you'll need a darning needle. So that's what you need for the sleeve part of the tote. And for preparing to put the liner in, um, what you're going to need is your fabric, of course, with the needle. Um, that you can use. You're going to need some thread. I've got a multicolored box of thread, so I'll pick out probably one that resembles my my color of uh, yarn. You're going to want a, a nice sharp pair of scissors for cutting the, um, the fabric. And then you're going to want some kind of clips. You can use these um, pins or you can use some clips like this to pin everything in place to sew it up. And one thing that's not required, but it's really handy to have, kind of a ruler or a straight line will help you get the right measurement when you're cutting your fabric. Okay, so the last item you're gonna need for this tutorial is some of this, I know it might be hard to see, but this plastic canvas. Um, it has little holes in it. People use it for crafts. I'm actually gonna put this between the crochet piece and the liner to give it stability, which is what gives it that great um, uh, shape. Even when you don't have the book inside, it's gonna stand up and look really nice. And this is really inexpensive, so take some of this. Um, pay attention to the size of the holes. I'm using fingering weight yarn. So I've got the one with a little bit of smaller hole, but they do have some with a little bit of bigger hole uh, so that you could use that with worsted weight so you could get like a darning needle through there with the yarn a little bit easier if you had a thicker yarn. Okay, so that's the last thing you're gonna need for materials. Yeah, so I will have a written uh, pattern at some point, uh, but this is just a basic plan of what we're doing. We're gonna be making basically, um, if you've seen a box before you fold it up, we're gonna be making um, this kind of funky shape here. We're gonna start with the base in the middle and going back and forth in single crochet rows. And then we're gonna do each piece of the sides. So you have a front side, a back side, and then the two actual thin sides. Um, once we have this all done, then we're going to go around the whole piece in single crochet to give it a nice border for you to seam up. And then we'll seam up each one of these sides with a flat surface kind of stitch like a um, often used on granny squares. And, uh, and so that's the basic plan. 
and once all that is done you'll just do your top border stitches so to begin you're going to do a chain stitch the width of the base of the sleeve so that's that that's this part here everything in the middle there um, and then we have to go around with this detailing after so you can chain the number of stitches you need for your book I'm gonna chain 45 for mine okay so I have my 45 stitch chain that looks like this and I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across giving me a total of 44 single crochets for this row so go ahead and do your first row and come back to me for row two okay so I've done the first row 44 stitches out of 45 chains when you get to the end you're just going to chain one and then single turn your work working on the opposite side single crochet in every chain across now what you're going to want to do is an even number of rows so row one is your right side row two is your wrong side uh, and when you get finished with doing the rows for the base of the book you're going to want to finish on um, on an even number row I have eight so if you're doing if you want to do a thinner tote you can if you want to do it a slightly bit bigger you can do that as well just do an even number you want that um, last row that you do uh, after you do the base it has to be on uh, an odd number so for the for us to do the um, border around do an even number of rows for the base of your book and once you've got that uh, come back I'm gonna do eight you could do six you can do eight you could do ten um, you know depending on your yarn and how wide you want your sleeve to be okay so now we have our single crochet base done I've done eight rows this is what it looks like um, so now we're going to do a border around this whole piece um, and you can do it in single crochet or you can do it in half double now what we want is a border around that we can stitch into the back of make this little detail on the bottom some people do it by just crocheting in the back loop only but I like to push the whole stitch forward so two ways to accomplish that is I, you can do a single crochet all the way around it's a little bit trickier to get in the back of the stitch or you can do a half double which is really easy to see where to go so I'm going to show you guys to do it with a half double all right so for this next part you're going to chain one turn your work and in that very first stitch you're going to do one uh, half double so I'm going to yarn over insert my hook and I'm going to do a half double and I'm going to do a half double in every stitch and so for me this is row nine um, so I'm going to do half doubles all the way until I get to the end of this row and then I'll meet you back okay so we're back I've done half doubles all the way across and I'm at the last stitch for this row so now I'm going to put three stitches I'm going to put three half doubles in the last stitch so that's my last stitch I would need one increase and then another stitch for this other side of the bag in that same space now you need to work across here so what you need to have is eight stitches total between the increases so I've got that extra stitch here and I'm going to have three stitches on each end so essentially you're going to need to have your two corners plus six because you have one stitch from this corner and one stitch from that corner counting to make this eight so in order to do that I'm just going to work six more stitches across and then I'm going to put three stitches in the next corner and in that very last stitch this is actually where I had my slip knot so you might want to tighten that up after so you just go right in that same space with that slip knot move the slip knot out of the way and do three stitches it turns the corner and it counts for that first stitch 
on the next side. So now it looks like this on the corner. You have a corner with three stitches, a corner with three stitches, and six more stitches in between. I have my uh, 44 stitches on this side, eight stitches on this side, and then one little stitch in the middle that I'm not counting. So now we're just going to continue all the way around the piece until we get back to the beginning, uh, doing that same um, half doubling. And I'll just show you guys this. For the bottom part here where you're working in the chains, you just find every single single crochet stitch that you had and put another half double in the same space. So like here I have a stitch. I'm going to go in there with a half double. It's like mirrored to the other side. Here's another stitch. So you just want to have the same amount of stitches. I'll finish that and then I'll meet you back. And now we're going to slip stitch to join you don't count the slip stitch. And this is what it looks like. Now we're going to go all the way around this piece one more time with single crochet, the third bar on the back of the stitch. So we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work upside down so you can see the back of it. Uh, and you're going to leave the top two stitches alone and you're going to go into this third bar on the back of the stitch. There, you can see how I'm in it. you're going to do a single crochet. And you're just going to turn your work a little bit so you can see that stitch and work single crochets in that third bar all the way across. And you can see it's turning those top two stitches out. Okay, so you just go along until you get all the way back around uh, and make sure you do it in the corners as well. Okay, so this is what it looks like once you have gone in the third bar on the back of the stitch and done the royal ridging all the way around. It looks like this. Now here, you're um, ready to join. You have the slip stitch and the chain one that you will ignore and slip stitch to join. Okay, so now it's time to start working those side panels. Okay, so now, now we're going to work back and forth in rows again. I am already in the first stitch here. So I'm just going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet into that first stitch and then I'm going to single crochet all the way across. When I get to the end of this piece, what's important is that I do not stitch into that middle stitch. Okay, so you're just going to do the 44 stitches and stop and don't use that middle stitch that's in your corner on the end. So I'm going to do that row and I'll come back and show you. You can see I'm at the end here and I don't go all the way to the end. I go to the 44th stitch only on here. That stitch in the middle is skipped, and then that next stitch is the first out of the eight stitches that I'm going to work for this piece. So now it's just basic rows. You're just going to chain one and turn and work single crochet rows um, until you get that side panel uh, as tall as it needs to be. I did 34, I think I counted. Um, so you're going to do as many as you want for the height and then you're going to just leave enough space to do um, about three or four rows of single crochet at the end. Okay, so work on that panel um, and then when you're done, uh, come back. I will do mine and then we'll meet back and I'll show you how to attach for the other sides. And it's pretty ju much just rows for all the other sides. Okay, so I have done all of my rows for this side here. Um, I did 34 rows and I'm finishing on the wrong side. So this is the back side. I did my last row. And then this is the front side. The reason that you want to finish on the back side 
um, on the wrong side is because once you make all of the panels you're going to go all the way back around this with single crochet and you want that single crochet to be on the front side or the right side uh, of your work. I accidentally pulled the stitch out. Okay, I'm going to cut off that tail. So you're going to have a tail on the end of each panel. That's fine. You'll sew them in when you're doing the um, the round of single crochet around the piece. I'm going to pull it through the loop there and just make a little knot just to secure it. Um, and then we're going to, I'll show you what it looks like with the book there just so you can see. So this is how it's fitting the book sleeve right now or the book tote on the book and it comes up about like that so you can see I'm not quite at the top of the book so I have a little bit of space to do um, those other stitches so that's what that looks like and to do the next uh, panel I usually like to do the two big ones first and then I'll finish with the side ones so you're gonna come over to your next corner here from the right side and you're gonna find the stitches so here I have the three corner stitches and so we're not using this one remember we're not using that so whatever stitch was inside of that stitch so this stitch is inside of that stitch so those are the stitches that you're going to skip so what that tells me is this is my first stitch the very first stitch of the row and so you're just going to join on right there on the front side in that first stitch skipping that corner stitch and the way I join is I just pull it through I leave a tail and then I chain one and then I do a single crochet into that same stitch working over the tail so you can single crochet work over your tail and then just repeat what you did on the other side and you're going to do that for all of the four panels making sure that you do the exact same number of rows ending on the wrong side for each panel once you have that done meet me back and I will show you the next step now that you've done your four panels it should look like this so you've got 44 stitches here 44 stitches here, 8 and 8, and between every one you'll have that middle stitch that was skipped. The next step is to work all the way around the perimeter of the piece with single crochet, which will help give us a good uh, place to seam up the sides with those single crochets lining up. For me, this is where I need to start my second ball of yarn. So let me just grab that. So you want to make sure that you stay on the right side. This is our right side. And you can see that I finished with a row on the back side. So all of these top rows of all these panels uh, are ready for me to do a right side row. Okay, so I'm going to hook into my first stitch in one of the corners. And join my yarn there. I usually just chain one and then do a stitch to lock that in place and you'll have your um, your tails from all of your four panels and I'll just crochet over the top of those like this to hide those tails as I go Okay, so you're going to just single crochet across. I'm going to single crochet all the way to the end of this panel and then I'll meet you back and show you how to turn. Okay, I'm at the corner, the very last stitch. So in this last stitch, I'm going to do my last single crochet for that panel. I'm going to do one more for to turn. And then I'll do a third stitch into the same into the same stitch there to turn the corner. So that counts 
for this side now. Uh, and again, everywhere you see these little straight bumpy uh, lines, that's where I'm going to do two single crochets. So I'm going to go in right here and do two. I'm going to skip over those legs there so I won't work into this space, for example. And everywhere you see this, you do two. Two there, two there. Okay. And I ended up actually doing 32 rows. Uh, I think I said 34 before, but that doesn't really matter. You just do the same number on every panel. Um, and so then I'm going to do one single crochet. Um, I'm going to do one single crochet for every uh, row, but I'm just skipping a row and doing two. So do two, skip a row, do two um, to make it nice and clean. And I'm going to do that all the way until I get to this corner down here, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so we're coming up on the corner or the uh, we're coming up on that stitch right there that we haven't worked into yet so let me just get there I'll do these last two here and then for this right here I just kind of want to make sure that I don't have uh, a gap so if I work one single crochet right here and it looks good that's fine but you see there's like this little hole right here so sometimes what I do in that corner just to make sure that it looks nice is I'll do like a a fake decrease um, it doesn't really matter you can do whatever looks nice on your piece I think I accidentally pulled out a stitch hold on Okay, so what you can sometimes do to fill in the space is you can like knit two together or even three together, like in those holes right along there. Whatever you need to do to make it look like there's not like a big gaping hole down in the corner. Uh, but, but really you just need one stitch for that one uh, single crochet that you skipped. So I'm just going to go in to this uh, stitch beside it and pull up a loop and then I'm going to go into that stitch and pull up a loop and just do one stitch and it's just now you see I don't have as big a gap showing right there so you'll do you know one stitch however you want to do it just do a stitch in there and then on this side right here I need to now go up and do the same thing that I did on on this side I need to keep putting single crochets all the way around so I'm going to start And if I go to, if I go to right here, like I did on that side, you can see I'm leaving a gap. So I change it up a little bit. I actually put a stitch in that first bottom one. And then when I get up here, you know, I'll put one right there. So you just need to make sure that you have the same amount of stitches on this side that you have on this side. Um, and do that all the way around your piece, putting one stitch everywhere around and trying to make sure you don't have a gap in your corner. So I'll work all the way around my piece in single crochet and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I did I did this side here. So I just wanna show you guys one more time actually. Um, when you're coming up to the end of this side here. Okay, when you get back up to the very top, remember you're just gonna do three stitches in that very first top single crochet so I'm doing three and that turns me and then I have a tail so I just continue to work over the tails all the way around like this and I've turned that corner so you can see how it looks when you work like this and then you turn and you go up okay now we're going to do that all the way around and then after we're going to sandwich these together and we're going to seam them up. Okay? So I will finish going around and then I'll meet you back to seam it up. Okay? So now all of our slip stitching around is completed and we are ready to seam up. So you're going to fold it like this 
to make your basically to make your corner sides um, and then you're going to seam up so from the top down to the bottom and then you're going to tuck your tail back to the back and sew it in in the back um, because we're still attached from doing the the outline I guess of it in single crochet we can go ahead and start with this corner so what you need to do is you need this thread to be sandwiched between the two panels like this I'm just gonna cut that tail off Okay, and you can seam up the side pieces however you want. I do it with a flat surface stitch like you would join granny squares. Basically what you're doing for the flat surface stitch is you're taking the inside loop from this panel and the inside loop from that panel and you're pulling through both of those loops and also the loop on your hook. So you're like slip stitching all the way down. So you can do this or you can do it a number of ways you could do single crochets down you could whip stitch this together however you want to seam it up is fine but this is how i do it and i quite like how this uh, looks so we're going to start with that middle stitch on the top and you want to make sure your thread is sandwiched between the two panels take the inside loop from the top and then the inside loop from over on this side, you're gonna take that one in the middle. So we, we leave that third stitch on the top alone. You have three loops on the hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops like that. The working yarn rests in between the whole way down. So again, we're gonna, and we always jump over it. So we stay on top, grab that loop there jump over the, the yarn in the middle and then hook into that stitch there. Then pull through all three. Okay, and then you jump over, grab a loop on this side, jump back over, grab the loop on that side. And sometimes I like to just like twist my hook all the way around in a circle, that helps. Grab the yarn, pull it through all three. Okay, and so you're just gonna you're gonna do that all the way down, and if this is too tricky for you, I mean, do it however you want to do it. It's still gonna look nice. So I'm gonna take that loop, jump over, hook into that loop, and then spin my hook, and then pull through all three. You just have to always jump over that working yarn, so it stays down and underneath. Okay, so we'll keep seaming until we get down to the corner and then I'll meet you back and I'll show you what to do at the corner. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end here. Just a few more stitches left. Okay, you see you get a little bit tighter in there as you go along. And when you get down to the very last bit of space you have. It looks like that and it kind of closes itself up and then I'm just going to cut this I'm going to pull it through like that and then from the outside that bottom stitch there I'm going to come from there and grab the yarn and just use that space to pull that working yarn to the back and now this side piece has has been seamed up. And that's how it looks with the flat surface stitch along there and it lets it just kind of fold really nicely. So you're gonna do your seaming up on all your sides and then we're going to work the rows on the top border. So I'll meet you back once you've seamed up all your sides. Okay, so I've done three of the sides, three of the seamings. And it's looking like this. This is how this one looks. 
and on this side it looks like this and I'll just uh, I remembered I didn't show you how to start <laughs> without the thread being joined so I'm gonna do this one with you okay so basically it needs to be like that and I have my top piece there my bottom piece there I'm going to join in to the middle stitch uh, so those three stitches are there we ignore the one over to this side and we I'm gonna just join into that middle stitch this is the bottom panel of the two panels that I'm working with I'm gonna let that tail fall down in there I'll sew that in later I'm gonna bring up this other panel perfect so I'm gonna turn this I'm gonna find on the other side the middle stitch of the other corner and I'm gonna take that inside loop and then I'm going to go into the stitch that I actually connected to and I'm gonna just take that inside loop so I've got three loops on my hook and I just need to get started after that it's fine so I'm gonna pull through those three loops and that might be a little bit tricky you have to twist around and get through all three of them I can pull the tail to tighten it up and now I'm connected and I can just take the inside loop from both panels so I'll take this one jump over again take the next one pull through all three take the inside loop from the bot the top panel the inside loop from the bottom panel pull through all three It's a little bit tedious, but it's because I really like how it looks at the end. So by all means, if you have a different seaming that you enjoy doing, just seam it however you want to seam it. So I'm going to finish seaming this side, and then I'll come back and we'll do the next part. Great, so all my sides are seamed up. Looks like this. Looks like that on both the side the side pieces now the moment of truth <laughs> the book should still fit so here's the book let's see how she fits I don't know why that book is a female but okay great it looks good I have a little bit of wiggle room so that's good um, now we're going to just work the top bit here you can see it on this one I have just a few rows uh, I like working into this when I'm doing the um, the inside stuff okay so just going to join anywhere it doesn't really matter where you join for this sometimes I like to join in a side piece so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take maybe maybe here and join okay there now I'm joined um, if you have tails left okay so I'm just gonna single crochet all the way around um, now you can single when you get to these parts here where you have the the corners you want to be careful you don't increase because it'll make your top bit like really big so i'm just going to try to do just one i'm going to skip over the seam and i'm just going to see this first stitch right here in the corner we only took half the stitch so i'm just going to take both both loops and go in them and do a stitch so bring it back together close up that loop okay and then you just continue around and do three to four I mean I guess you could do two um, do a minimum of two but um, two to four rounds of single crochet for your border there and uh, and then you'll be all done with the sleeve part of the tote and what we'll have left to do uh, are the handles and the stabilizer so this the plastic insert um, and then the liner 
as well. So let's finish up this part. Okay, so now I have finished all of my border rows at the top. You can see I have about this much space here. And I did slip stitching around the top to make it look a little bit more finished. So that's optional. Um, I've got all these tails on the inside to, um, to deal with. So I'm going to go and sew in my tails. And then we'll move on to the plastic canvas part.